At least 20 people were killed, including two children and 90 others wounded. That's after three Russian missiles struck into the heart of the central Ukrainian city of Vinitsia. Now, the city is located about 200 kilometers southwest of Kyiv and is far from the main front lines in eastern and southern Ukraine. The national police chief says that an office block suffered a direct hit, damaging nearby residential buildings as well and setting off a huge fire in its wake. President Volodymyr Zelensky has deplored the attack as an open act of terrorism by Russia. Moscow has constantly denied deliberately targeting civilians. A relentless Russian shelling continues across Ukraine. In the meantime, on the main battlefields in the eastern Donbass, the regional governor says that Moscow's forces launched 12 rocket and airstrikes on the border as between Russian-held Luhansk and Donetsk that's still under Ukrainian control. Kramatorsk's mayor reports that Russian missiles also hit the industrial zone of his city, cutting off electricity in some parts of it. And meanwhile, Ukrainian forces have struck back again in the southern Kherson region, held by Russia. They hit two military checkpoints, as well as a landing pad in Nova Kakovka. Ukrainian officials say 13 occupiers were killed in that attack. It's the second one in the area this week, as Kyiv prepares its ground forces for a massive counteroffensive to take back the region. Well, John Gambrell joins us live now from Lviv for more. John, uh, tell us, if you will, more about this Russian strike on the central Ukrainian city of Venetia. What more do we know? This attack appears to have been carried out with cruise missiles launched from a Russian submarine in the Black Sea. That's according to Ukrainian officials in their initial reports about this attack that just shattered the calm in the city of Venetia. Now, what happened then, the, the missiles smashed into basically a large roundabout area that had a lot of civilians in it. It was next to a concert hall and a multi-story building. And afterwards, the blast had blown out all the shop windows, all the glass from that multi-story building. Cars were on fire and unfortunately, bodies lay in the street. Now, firefighters have gone in and started to try to extinguish the flames from those fires. And authorities say that at least 20 people have been killed and 90 wounded, as you mentioned earlier. And unfortunately, there do seem to be potentially as many as 15 people also reported missing. So these casualty numbers may go up. Now, the thing about this attack so far is that Russia has not acknowledged carrying it out. Russia, as you mentioned before, has denied targeting civilian areas, but this was clearly a civilian area. There were no military installations that were in that vicinity that we're aware of or others are aware of. And meanwhile, this city also had become sort of a gathering point from those fleeing the fighting elsewhere in the east, the city that's southwest of Kyiv, had not really seen the same level of shelling or anything else. People had kind of come there for that sense of peace and calm. And now, peace there is shattered. John, Russian forces have been making a relentless push into the eastern side of Ukraine. What's the latest from the front lines there? Russia had made some small territorial gains as recently as a couple of weeks ago in the Luhansk area. But as of right now, we're not seeing the Russians make any large breakout. This comes as analysts say that the Russians are now in what they describe as an operational pause, regrouping and rearming after over 140 days of waging war on Ukraine. Now, that doesn't mean that the fighting has stopped, though. Kharkiv and other areas in the east just continue to be bombarded with Russian shelling, whether that be missiles or, or artillery attacks. And there seems to be some effort by the Russians to kind of solidify their positions ahead of any other sort of Ukrainian counteroffensive. Now, the one thing that's interesting is the British military today said that given the current state of affairs, the aging Russian equipment, the aging weaponry and the Soviet era tactics that the Russians are using in that area aren't really going to be enough to break through and have them make any other large territorial gains. Meanwhile, the Ukrainians have been able to use these American-made HIMAR missiles, these missiles on the back of trucks that we've been talking so much about, to pretty great effect, accurately targeting Russian command posts, ammunition depots, and logistical points deep behind enemy lines. This fight is continuing. 
but it looks like, given the fact that this fire is continuing, that we're in for days more of fighting. John, thank you for that update. John Gambrell there in Lviv.